customer had a knock on the door, young man. You don't know me, do you? But I have to admit I don't. I mean, how could you, standing so far away at that microphone? Oh, introduction to Western civilization. Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, by the numbers. Yes. Well, I doubt that you came in here to discuss our overcrowded classroom situation. Excuse me, sir. Now, what can I do for you? Does the name Johnson Joseph ring a bell? Mr. Johnson, if you'd be good enough to get to the point, I have some work to do. All right. All right, Professor, I don't know how it happened with the TAs and all, but somehow you graded my paper yourself. And it was an F. And I didn't rate it. Well, I have to be the judge of that. But you can make it up in summer school. There won't be any summer school if I don't make these grade points. Mr. Johnson, Johnson, I, I remember grading your first paper as well, don't I? C minus. Well, it was disorganized and was full of easy generalizations. Just like this last one. If you'll excuse me, I do have some work to do. Professor, if I flunk out, I'm going to end up dead in some rice paddy. You've got to change my grade. Mr. Johnson, I teach history. And one of the truths it tells me is that such a deception would do you more harm than good. Would you please let me worry about that? And, and don't give me that stuff about it. If you change it for me, you're going to have to change it for somebody else. See, this is not a new experience for you, is it, sir? Now, the F stands, Mr. Johnson, if you cannot or will not do college grade work, and you'll fail the course. Oh, professor, Professor, look. I'll, I'll, I'll do better next time. I promise I will. I'll even Thank do an extra paper. All that is necessary is that you do the required work on an acceptable level. Look, I don't like to beg, Professor. I don't like to is... see any man beg, young man. Please, this is not the end of the world. Damn it! You know, you're all alike. All of you. My father, all of you. It's the rules. Always the rules. The rules are to make you so you can live in this society. So you can, can keep the black people in their place. So you can build cars that fall apart. So you, can, so you can keep the economy going and then blow it up with a big bomb. Mr. Johnson, Mr. Johnson, I could add to your list of grievances about our present condition. I don't care to continue this conversation. My introduction to Western civilization, huh? All right, I've been introduced. And, baby, one day you're going to be. Insight. Stories of spiritual conflict in the 20th century. Insight. This is an exciting time to be alive, but it's also a painful one, for our civilization is changing very rapidly. So rapidly, in fact, that sometimes we're left frightened and confused by it all. Change is never easy for a human being. Not for me, not for you, not for any of us. But it is necessary and desirable, for there's no life or growth without it. Our democracy has built-in means of affecting change. But sometimes these means are slow and frustrating. And we may be tempted to opt out and use other means. Violence can propel rapid change. But is it the kind of change we want? Does it do more harm than good? Is violence ever justified in the name of a more humane and just social order? in the name of maintaining the status quo? And what of those who use violence? Is it still true that those who rely on the sword will perish by the sword? <laughs> there you are. No pie? Mom, I got the rehearsal tonight. You know, the party's tomorrow night. Oh, so Joe Banana and his bunch finally got a job. It's called a gig, Dad, and we're not Joe Banana's bunch anymore. Oh, no, they're called the Destroyers. That's exactly what we plan to do, annihilate the party. Are you getting paid, dear? You bet, and we're not cheap. <laughs> Evelyn, this boy is going to be our salvation. Next week, the Ed Sullivan Show. And in a year, I think we can retire. We can go to Mallorca or Capri. Where would you like? This family just cracks me up. Uh Oh, 
May I be excused? No. Thank you. Right. Andre, I think you should go to that party. I know. You want to make me a CIA agent. Hmm. Well, we could uh, provide you with an absolutely undetectable tape recorder. Oh, Dad. Why don't you just bug me or something? You know this boy at school? Every time he had a new filling and he faced east, it picked up the top 40. Hi, Mom. Hey, Daddy. You coming to the game Friday night? <laughs> the game? 50 yard line. We're off, we're off for old Siwash. I'll be there. Don't be too late, dear. Bye bye. Top 40. <laughs> You know something? I like living here. We used to argue a lot about keeping you, but I think you're going to work out after all. Here, Mom. I'll take them. Oh, thank you, dear. This time. So. <laughs> Evelyn. I mean, do you realize how long it's been since we've been to a good movie? Indeed I do. All right. You know that one you wanted to see? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Down, Professor. Get over there and sit down, little girl. What is this, Johnson? Who is this boy? All right. Mr. Johnson, what do you want? Sit down, Professor. Sit down! Is there anybody else around here? No, nobody. Where's the phone? Yeah, it's uh, on the hall table. What are you doing here? Let me introduce myself, Mrs. Winters. I'm one of your distinguished husband's students. Or I guess you could make that I was. Mr. Johnson, are you under the influence of any drug? No, Professor. No, just being 19 is bad enough. Andre, sit down. Sit down. Come on. Come on. What do you want here? I guess this gun could tell you that I have had the course. I gave this young man a failing grade. You gave me a death sentence and you know it. Did you know, Mrs. Winters, that your husband is handing out death sentences every semester? Your daddy, little girl, is part of the, the big establishment that someday is going to chop you into little bitty pieces. Hey, Mr. Johnson, this is about your grade. I think we can discuss I that. think you made it perfectly clear about my grade this afternoon, Professor. Now sit down and shut up! All right. Cheesy drapes. The whole place is pretty, pretty cheesy. Turn on the television. Go on, turn on the television. Picture, no sound. No color, huh? Now, where we find this adequate? We find this adequate. We find this adequate. Stand up, professor. Now tell me, why can't you just admit that you don't make enough money to buy one? Mr. Johnson, you haven't yet answered my question. Why did you come here? Well, I guess you could say I came to have a little fun, huh? Like you do? You know, like throwing bodies on the draft board. After your fun, what then? Kill you. Again. Yeah. Mr. Johnson, this doesn't concern my family. I, uh, would you let my wife and daughter go upstairs? Oh, so go upstairs discuss? so they can call the cops. Oh, sure, oh, I will. Let would. Andrea go upstairs. She won't call the police. Look, nobody's going anywhere. Sit down. Well, then, may I move about? May I move about? Professor, why can't you just say, can I move about like anybody else? Young 
Oh, man, you should see a doctor. I never felt better. There's nothing wrong with me. But what about you, Professor? Were you in the last war or the one before? Which one of our glorious little wars were you in? None of them. I tried to enlist, but they wouldn't take me. Oh, no, that's very interesting. You never got a chance to prove whether you were brave or not. Well, what do you think, Professor? Are you brave? You're quite right, Mr. Johnson. I felt guilty about not being in the service. I don't know whether I would be brave under those circumstances. Hey. Hey, how do you like that, little girl? Your old man's a coward. I do. I do think I would have the courage to stand up for what I believe in. Oh, oh what, what you believe in? And what would that be, Professor? Well, I teach history, Mr. Johnson, and history teaches me, one of the things it teaches me is that violence and hate might prevail for a time, but eventually it destroys those who practice it. And now we come on with the uh, crime doesn't pay and love thy neighbor. Now, love has nothing to do with it, Mr. Johnson. I don't have to love any man. But I do have to respect him. About your daughter, Professor. What about your pretty little daughter? Would you like her to marry one of them? Young man, you should You shut that. up, lady. And you just shut up. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to him. He's my man. All right, if, he you're, if, if you're talking to me, then come on over here and talk to me, please. Go on and talk. All right, all right. If I dictated to my daughter who she should marry, I wouldn't be respecting her, would I? Oh, come on, now, cut it. You know, you're, you're, you're bringing her up to marry white, Anglo-Saxon, Protestant. Young man, your problem is you don't respect yourself. If you can't respect yourself, you can't respect anyone else. And I suppose you respect yourself. Yes, I do. Um... Man, are you smug? I doubt that, Mr. Johnson. I'm, I'm not happy with some of the compromises I've made, and I know about my own failures. Oh, now, those were the words I wanted to hear. That's it, compromises, failures. Sit down, Professor. Sit down. What do you want? Why, I, um, I want the story of his life. That's what I want. I, I want you to tell me all about it, uh, beginning with, uh, I was born in... You know, you know, you're out of your mind. He's not out of his mind, Henry. He's just playing God on Judgment Day. So. Come on, Professor. Give me the story. Come on, let's have it. Uh, I was born in... Uh... St. Louis. Fine. Go on. How, how did you become such a, a brilliant teacher? All right. All right, my father was a shopkeeper. A small, dark, ordinary variety store. And we lived above the store. My mother, of course, helped him keep shot. Man, that was awful. Well, we're getting closer. Well, yeah, to what? Getting thrown out of our first job? I think we're overtrained. Yeah, we ought to split. Run through to Gano, Saturday morning. Second the motion. Yeah. Motion passed. <laughs> hey, Bob, I'm, well, uh, entering Antioch, and I was wondering if... You want my father to put in a good word, huh? Well, he has read some of my themes. Sure, it's no trouble at all. I appreciate it. He likes to do things like that. I'll tell him as soon as I get home. So I decided to accept this position, and we came here. So that's the whole story, huh? Where's the other kid? He's at... He's at a rehearsal. Rehearsing what? He plays the drums in a band. Oh, one of those. What do you mean by that? The nothings. The nothings, the wish I was. I'll bet you don't even let him let his hair grow long, do you, Professor? He's got the grooviest long hair in the world. Oh, well, that's because his old man doesn't have the guts to make him cut it. And yours does, I see. Look, you leave my father out of this. He's got nothing to do with this. Leave him out of it.
So that's the story of your life, huh? A teacher in a cow college. What a flop. Oh, I don't think so. Nor do I. What's the matter, little girl? I, I didn't hear you say anything. My father's a wonderful teacher. It sounds like you've got that nicely memorized. How much do you make a year, Professor? None of your business. Oh, hey, listen to that. I ask you how much you make, and she gets up very tight. I guess I know what's bugging her. My salary is 12500 My old man makes three times that much. See, those who can do, those who can't teach. Oh, I like teaching, young man. I enjoy it. Being a teacher, I have to accept certain facts about myself. I wonder if you can accept the facts about yours. There are any facts. The, the first fact being that you seem to be a reasonably decent young man. Self-hatred is destroying him. What a hypocrite you are. I'm sitting here with a gun on you and you call me a decent young man? I think you stink. Well, at least we've got an honest voice here. He stinks, Andreas, because he's trying to. He wants to. Get up. Don't Give me some coffee. Please. Three sugars, black. And don't try anything funny. Look, Evelyn, why, why don't you help right? We can all use some coffee. Wait a minute. Remember, this gun's got a lot of bullets in it, and Dad can do a lot of bleeding. All right, now, I told you, you're going to leave my family out of this I'm shop. calling the shots, Professor. I've got the power. All right, that's true. You have got the power. Power, as you call it, temporarily. What's temporary about my being able to kill you? I'm not talking about my death. I'm talking about your survival. Do you know William Empson's poem, Missing Dates? Slowly the poison, the whole bloodstream filled. The waste remains. The waste remains and kills. Now I suppose you're going to start on uh, my immortal soul? Well, look, spare me the metaphysical garbage, Professor. You don't have to believe in a soul to know what I'm talking about. I might, I might be flunking your course, Professor, but I'm not stupid. Now, someday, uh, the Iceman's going to come for me. That's all. That, that's how it is. All right, that's how it is. And what then? Then, nothing. Nothing. Zero, the big black. That's your opinion. But what about the ideas you've left behind? The heritage for those who follow. Power. Power, baby. White power, black power, gun power. That's what I'm leaving. Here's your coffee. All right, set it down right there, and then, then sit down there like a good little girl. See how it is when you have the power? Ow! It worked. That's how they do it on TV. I'll call the police. Oh, wait, Evelyn, when... Oh, don't touch that. Don't touch it. Well, Daddy, pick up the gun. Elliot, what are you doing? Well, if, I, if I pick it up, he's right about his power, isn't he? You've got to be kidding. I don't believe. I don't believe it. I don't. All right. All right, everybody, back to the chairs. Come on, you back. 
to your chairs. And you little girl, I'm gonna smash. Oh, wait! Just wait a minute! I said you leave my family out of this. I thought this was turn the other cheek time, Professor. That's my cheek, not theirs. Well, I finally got the picture. Why teachers are so underpaid. Because they can't cut it anywhere else. They're stupid. Daddy, why did you give him back that gun? No, I am. I'm, I'm sorry, no. If I've been consistent about anything in your upbringing, it is that I don't believe in violence. You know why you say that, Professor? For the same reason all your kind hand out the non-violence garbage. Because you stand to lose by it. So don't play any establishment with me, man, because I know how it is. You see, what happens is you get, you get a job and a nice family and a nice little mortgage and a smooth way of life, and then the natives start getting restless. And then come all your, your speeches about brotherly love and, 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 and don't burn my house down, baby, and cool it. You admit it. Well, yes, I had been unfortunately too much of it, yes. Elliot, you can't let this young hoodlum browbeat you. Oh, it's not a hoodlum. Thanks. It's a cripple. What are you talking about? Well, young man, I don't propose to investigate why and when it happened, but someplace in your few young years, you've lost the ability to love yourself. You knock off that love business. Now, look, you're not a psychiatrist, so don't go practicing without a license. Oh, anybody with two eyes could see what you are and why you came here. All right, go ahead and tell me. Why did I come here? All right, you wanted to be punished. Nothing would make you happier than to goad me into just hating you, because that would confirm every belief you have about yourself. Well, I am not going to give you that. All right, Professor. Have it your own way. Stand up! Stay out of this! This is between the Professor and me. I won't hit you, Mr. Jones. I hate you. I hate you. Hate is what he feeds on. Not... No, no, professor, it isn't hate. It, it's love. Get up, so I can kiss you again. You're a monster. No, Ellen, hate is the monster. No, it won't kill you if you don't let it, Mr. Johnson. No, it's not going to kill me. It's going to kill you. <laughs> Well, I'd say that wasn't quite as hard as the last one. Now, why wasn't that as hard as the last one, Mr. Jim? You shut up! We just shut up! Shut up! I won't hate you! I won't hate you! I won't hate you! You, you can beat me till I'm unconscious. When I... Recover, I won't hate you, Mr. Johnson. I won't fight you. I won't. All right, you give up. You please. Stay away from me. Do you give up? Stay away from me. Stay away from me. I don't want to shoot you. I don't want to. Do. I don't want you to. I know you don't want to, son. So just give up, please. I'm not gonna hurt you. Just give up. Come on. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna I I know good. I, I, I am a must. I am. Well, now you can just stop feeling sorry for yourself. You can get a little self-respect. Now look, I'm not telling you not to fight for what you believe in, are you? Go ahead, you tear our hypocrisies apart. You make it a better world, but just don't blow it up while we're getting there, all right? 
All right, son. Tell you something else, I think you're gonna be all right now. Professor, help me. <laughs> He was going to shoot. No, he wasn't. Johnson. I didn't. I didn't. Really, I, I, I did. Uh, Daddy, you all right? Dad? No, I'm not all right. Um, Just, sir, I'll need that for evidence. We can't tell if they're empty, sir. The boy is dead, officer. Daddy was hit in the eye. I saw him hit you. Sir, I'll need a statement. No. I'll give you a statement. Insight is a production of the Paulist Fathers, a group of Catholic priests who serve their God by serving those outside their church. <laughs>